And here we have again looking at the PicoCalc handheld computer from Clockwork. As you can see on screen, we have three windows. The window looking at the PicoCalc itself is this one here. We also have the terminal window for cool term, which we will use to talk to our PicoCalc. And underneath we have a text editor which we're going to use to build up an application to run on our computer. So although technically this is a hardware video channel, we're going to be covering some software today. We've shown how you can set up a basic program to run on the PicoCalc. Today we're going to create a program to display a parabola graph on the screen. This is going to display x equals y squared using the line command. So the first thing we wish to do in our application is to clear the screen. This can be done quite easily using the CLS command. In this application, we're not going to be using any line numbers for your basic application, as this version of MMBasic supports having either line numbers or having no line numbers. So we know we have a limited size on our screen. So we're going to set up a couple of constants which we can use to specify the area on screen which we're going to write to. So we're going to set up a screen width of 320, a screen height of 240. And we're going to set two other constants to set the centre of our screen, being the screen width divided by 2. Next, we're going to print something on the screen to let the user know what we're about to do. And then we'll put a slight delay in. So we'll print graphing x equals y times y. We'll then pause for 500 milliseconds, half a second, and then clear the screen once more. As we're going to be doing a chart on our screen, we'll want to display some axes, x and y. So we can use the line command quite happily to display these two lines on screen. So there are the two line commands to draw on the screen. The first is our x-axis. We set the x and the y coordinates. In this case, 0 and the centre of the height. We're then drawing to the screen width and then to the centre y. The next parameter, which we have currently as 1, is the line thickness. And the final parameter is the colour that you wish to draw. And we're doing exactly the same for the y axis. So let's try loading this application as it stands into our PicoCalc and see how it displays on screen. We can do that quite easily by using the xmodem receive command. And then we can attempt to transmit it. And there is our file transmitting. And we have a successful transmission. So let's try running the application. And there are our X and Y lines displaying on screen. We have some space below the X and Y coordinates which we can place any additional text. So now that we've got those axes on screen, can we add labels and tick marks to both axes? For this, we're going to use a for next loop. We're going to go from minus 5 to plus 5 for our X axis. And we're going to set the position of our cursor being the centre x location plus the number we're iterating, in this case the i variable, multiplied by 20. And we don't want to run off the side of the screen, so we can do a test on the value of x position. So here is the remainder of the code which should draw our tick mark using the line command and place a text number for the value on the screen. So let's send that to the computer and see if we're getting our tick marks on the x axis. And for speed, we can just use the send again, as cool term will remember the file we sent the last time. So our file has now been sent. So let's try the run command. So we have our values on screen, but we want them slightly below the x-axis. So we have a variable in here called text y offset. We're going to set this as a constant at the beginning of our application. And we're going to set the value of our offset to 8 pixels. So let's try running that. Let's first clear our screen. 
and we'll do x modem again. And we'll send the application once more. And we will attempt to run it. And there are the values beside the tick marks on the x-axis. So now that we've done that for the x-axis, we'll do exactly the same for the y-axis. So here is the code for our y-axis going from minus 5 to plus 5. Doing exactly the same, but this time on the y-axis. So now that we have that code in place for the y-axis, let's send that to the PicoCalc and see how it displays on screen. And there we have the x and the y axis, all marked up with the tick marks and the values. So next, it's time to draw the parabola of x equals y squared. We're going to be using the line command as we've done for the x axis and y axis to plot all our points. So first of all, we're going to plot all the points and connect them with lines, starting with the first point. We're setting y to be equal to minus 6 and x to be equal to y squared. So because we want this to fit on screen, we're going to be using a scaling value for scale x and scale y. So we need to set them up at the beginning of our application. So there are the initial values of our x and y scaling, 3 for the x and 20 for the y. So now we want to plot the curve by connecting all the points. So we're going to use a for next loop for the y value from minus 5.9 to plus 5.9, using the step command to step through each of these values at point 1. Next, we want to convert the value to our screen coordinates using the scaling factors we've just set up. And if any of the points are outside the bounding of our screen which we wish to draw to, we will ignore the values. So we first need to test the screen x and the screen y values. So if we get past these two if conditions, we can then draw our line, using the same approach as before. It takes a number of parameters, the previous screen x and y coordinates, to the current screen x and y coordinates, followed by a line width of 1, and we're going to plot our graph in yellow. And after that, we will populate the previous screen x and y values with the current value. This way we're always drawing the line from where we were, the previous iteration of y, to the next one. So let's save that and update the PicoCalc. And we can run once more. So there we have our parabola happily appearing on screen. So all we need to do now is put some text on the screen to explain to the user what they're actually seeing. And to do that, we can use the text command. This will allow us to add any titles or labels we want on the screen. Again, it takes an X and a Y coordinate. So these are going to appear at the top left-hand corner of our screen, in white and yellow. And we'll want to put something at the bottom of the screen to tell the user that the graph has now been completed, and they can press any key to exit. So we'll use the same text command, and we'll put this 20 pixels beyond the height of the screen value we set earlier to say the graph is complete and press any key to exit. And we will display this in a green colour. So as we want the user to press some key in the keyboard, we can use the in key value to pick that up. And what I'm doing here is I'm testing the value of in key dollar. If that equals something other than a blank, we will run in a loop. This is to clear any existing input that's in the input buffer. And then we will run on a loop until the user presses some button. So that should complete our program. Let's save that. We'll copy that up to the PicoCalc and we'll attempt to run it. And there is our completed application on the PicoCalc, showing at the top left hand corner our titles to say the value being graphed is x equals y times y. The yellow is the parabola and the white are the axis. And at the bottom of the screen it says graph complete, press any key to exit. So at that point we will press the return key and 
we're now back into the monitor. We can list our application, which displays quite happily. And we can, of course, use the edit option to edit it inside PicoCalc itself. And we can use the cursor keys here on the keypad to move up and down. And the F1 will save the application, have you made any changes, and the F2 will actually run it. And there we have our complete application graphing on our PicoCalc computer. Hopefully you'll find some of this code useful for your own applications, but that's it for today. Thank you for watching.